Hello, my name is Hans George Campbell, and today I thought I'd refurbish and future proof my Commodore 64 computer. So let's get started. Here we are at my workbench, <clears throat> and as you can see, my Commodore 64 computer is in, in pretty nice shape, um, considering how old it is. So let's take it apart. And, uh, yeah, let's take it apart. Now this one was made in the USA. Some of these are made in Germany. I'd love to find one of those that are that are made in Germany. I'm gonna try the low torque um, screwdriver first, you know, to see if it'll open it up. I don't really want to strip out these. These are self-tapping screws, so you don't want to use a screwdriver that has a lot of torque. And I think this Commodore 64 has been opened up before because these screws are coming out real easy. And usually, they don't come out that easy. They usually don't come out that easy. So, I think someone's already been in this, this Commodore 64. So, yeah. Alright, is this going to come out? Oh man, are you serious? It's not wanting to come out. Okay. Alrighty. It came out. Anyway, let's go ahead and open this up. Now you gotta be careful when you open these up because hmm, you can break those there's three tabs on the back that can break if you're not careful. So man. I don't know why Commodore did that on, on these. Oh my god. I mean, I don't want to break those, those tabs. Okay, so it didn't break. I mean, they're still in good shape. Okay, so there's a, a connector for the LED. And there's a connector for the keyboard. You don't want to pull on the wires, you want to actually pull on the connector itself. So, there we go. Okay, so, well, in case you want to see what the keyboard looks like, that's what it looks like, you know, inside the case. And I'll be refurbishing this keyboard, I'll be taking it completely apart. That'll be in part three of this series. Alrighty, now this one has one of those foil covered um, cardboard shields, which we will be putting back on here because I do plan on using this Commodore 64 computer um, with a 1702 monitor. And if you don't have this shield on, this RF shield on here, you would get all kinds of fuzzy lines and wavy lines on, on the CRT monitors so yeah now because this doesn't have the metal shield with the tabs that touch down on each one of the chips I will be adding heat sinks to the chips that that uh, normally get hot uh, but anyway let's go ahead and take out this motherboard yeah somebody I think has been in here already yeah, they've been in here. Yeah, they've been in here. So. 
So I think okay. There's um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven screws that you have to remove in order to take out this motherboard. And they appear to all be the same size. Let me just double check that. Yeah, they're all the same size. Okay. Now this is one of the later, I think one of the later motherboards because all the chips are soldered in except for the VIC-2 chip. I'm pretty sure it's socketed. But this computer works. There's nothing wrong with it. It works. So, yeah. Okay, what the hell? It should come out. Yeah, it should come out. Okay. So, there's the cardboard shielding. I will be dusting it off and cleaning it up. But I will be put uh, reinstalling this shield when I put this computer back together. Because it does um, block the radio frequencies from, you know that the chips give off and it'll keep those RF, you know, the radio frequencies away from my CRT monitor. And that's important. Now I know a lot of people, they don't put that shield back on and I don't recommend doing that. I recommend actually reinstalling the shield. So yeah, I'll be washing this case. Um, that'll be in uh, one of the the next parts of this series. Okay, so here's the motherboard right here. Um, this is the motherboard. And I have to unsolder. It's, it's got a, uh, a bottom shield. Now this shield needs to be replaced too um, to cut down on the RF you know, interference with the, uh, the CRT monitors. So I will be uh, unsoldering these. Okay, let me see this. Take that shit crap off of there. Um, yeah. All right. Now I know this Commodore 64 computer works. I know that for sure. It works. Um, okay. I'm going to be doing a total recap on this computer. Uh, this one here is revision, I think you go by this number, 250407. Okay. Now normally, the Commodore 64 motherboards, they have a, um, I think this is 2200 microfarad. Uh, I believe it's 25 volts. Actually, this is 16 volts. For this capacitor here and they usually have two I think these are 470 microfarad um, 25 volt if I'm not mistaken that's what these normally are but in some of the revisions like this one um, instead of a 470 microfarad cap right here, it's a, I believe a 1,000, yeah, 1,000 microfarad for here. Okay. Now, since voltage regulators are cheap, you know, I'm also going to be replacing these two voltage regulators with brand new um, voltage regulators. Let me get my pointer. I don't like touching the board with my fingers. But yeah, one of them, I believe this is a 7805. That's on this heat sink, and that, that I think is a 7812. Um, these here are your eight memory chips. Okay. And uh, let's see, I believe. Okay, let me get my magnifying goggles. I have a hard time seeing <laughs> this small print without them, so, yeah. This right here is a 65, 6581, which is the SID chip, the sound chip. 
I hate when they solder them in like that, but yeah, I'll definitely be putting heat sinks on that. And this, I think, is the PLA chip. Definitely need a heat sink on that. And this one is the 6510 microprocessor. Okay, and these are the system ROMs. And these are the what? The CIA chips. There's two of them right here. And then your VIC-2 chip, your main video chip, is underneath here. Now, if you have, I mean, if your Commodore 64 motherboard is like this, and it's got this real nice heavy metal piece on the top, I recommend that you don't remove that and put heat sinks on the VIC-2 chip. Don't do that. I've noticed a lot of you doing that in your videos, and just don't do it. Do not do that. The heat sinks do not have the um, they don't have the as much metal, the, the surface area of the metal that this shield has. So, yeah. Man, this thing does not want to come off of there. <laughs> it does not want to come off. Yeah, they tend to be a pain in the butt. They really do. Tend to be a pain in the butt. I'm trying to get them off. I don't want to mess up that cap. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Holy crap. Well, that thing is really on there. Man, that thing is really on there. It's got to come off, though. Got to come off, so I'm thinking... Well, let's see something. Oh, man. I've got a knife edge I can use to, like slip underneath here, but I don't really want to... Mm, God. Okay, well, that's one way to do it. <laughs> yeah, that's one. That actually works really well. In case you ever want to get these things off without bending that shield all the hell, you know, just get it off over here. Man, are you serious? Wow. Well, this thing is really on there. Oh man, are you serious? Wow. Mm. That thing's really on there. Man, what is going on with this? Okay. <laughs> I just had to get jiggy with it. It's uh it's coming off. But you don't want to bend Come on off there. Oh, come on. you got to be kidding me. Okay. Let me use my knife again. Okay. All right. Yeah, this, um... This, uh... This metal shield here, that's a lot of metal. And it's got a solid copper piece that actually touches the top of the VIC-2 chip. And even if you manage to put a nice big aluminum heat sink on there, it will not dissipate the heat as well as this will. This is a large surface area right here. And copper transmit heat, uh, transmits heat really well. The main problem with something like this is that this white um, uh, thermal paste that Commodore used decades ago, it has a tendency to dry out after 25, 30 years, you know. And if it does that, it no longer um, allows the heat 
to transfer from the chip to this large metal piece. And that's solid copper that's been riveted onto this metal piece. So what I would recommend doing, because a lot of you, you pop this off and you leave it off. And that's stupid. Don't do it. Okay, and then you put your heat sink on top of that. Don't do that. You will wind up burning up this chip. Okay, this is a much better heat sink than anything that you can peel and stick on and put on top of that. So what I would recommend doing is what I'm going to do is you clean this old thermal paste off of this chip, okay, and clean it, uh, clean it off this copper tab right here, and then you put a thin layer of Arctic Silver thermal paste on there, just a real thin amount. It doesn't take much, okay, and then you pop this back on, and trust me, this will be better than any aluminum heat sink that you can possibly have peel and stick on top of this VIC-2 chip. Okay? If you're lucky enough to have a Commodore 64 made like this with this big piece of metal covering that VIC-2 chip, you want to put this right back on after you finish whatever you're doing in here. Well, I'm going to be recapping in here. I think there's one cap right there that I... well, actually two capacitors that I'll be removing and replacing with brand new ones. And then I'll clean off all this stuff, put on some uh, Archie Silver, you know, compound on there, throw a paste on there, pop this baby back on, and it should dissipate that heat really nice from off of that chip. And plus, because this is mounted on this, that's a lot of metal right there that, di that will really do a good job of dissipating that heat. So, yeah, if, you, if your VIC-2 chip has something like this, around it, you want to reinstall this. Okay? Don't leave it off and peel and stick some aluminum heat sink on I know it looks cool and it looks pretty, but don't do that. You know, that peel and stick aluminum heat sink does not have the surface area for, that this has for dissipating that heat. And it's a lot less metal. Think how much metal that is. Because this also touches this. This big piece of metal that goes all the way around this VIC-2 circuitry. So, yeah. I just thought I'd mention that because I keep seeing you guys doing that. Don't do it. Don't do it. Okay, so that's the VIC-2 chip. Right there. Okay, that's the VIC-2 chip. So, this capacitor right here is 2,200 microfarad, 16 volt. That one there is 470 microfarad, uh, I believe it's 25 volt. This is 1,000 microfarad, 25 volt. This one, let me double check it. I think it's 100 microfarad. Yeah. Okay. Um, this one is 100 microfarad, 25 volt. Actually, wait a moment. It's 16 volt. This is 100 microfarad, 16 volt for that one. And the rest of these, I think there's like 14 of them. Um, let me check. I'm just double checking. Yeah, they're 10 microfarad. Okay, 10 microfarad, 25 volt for the rest of these. Okay. Now, because this motherboard, this Commodore 64 computer does not have that nice metal shield um, with the tabs that... that touch each one of the, the chips that get hot. I do recommend putting the peel and stick aluminum heat sinks on these chips that get hot. Okay? Um, because all you have is you got that foil covered cardboard as an RF shield. So in this particular case, yes, I do recommend installing those heat sinks. Now, if your Commodore 64 computer has that large metal shield with the tabs that are bent down that touches each one of these chips, you want to put that shield back. When you're finished with whatever you're doing on, on the motherboard, you want to put that shield back. Because not only does it uh, cut down on RF interference, you know, radio frequency interference with your CRT display, 
It also acts as a heat sink for all your main chips. And your peel and stick aluminum heat sinks, I know they look pretty and you people love to attach those. They do not do as good a job as that large piece of metal that touches each one of those chips. Again, what will cause these to overheat, even though you got that metal shield on there, is the thermal paste dries out over time. And it loses its ability to transfer the heat from the chip to the metal shield. So all you have to do is clean the old white thermal paste from off the chip and off the, the shield tabs that bend down and then touch each one of the chips. And you put on some new thermal paste. It could be either the, the white stuff or Arctic Silver, whatever you think is appropriate, you know, whatever, whatever you have on hand, you know. It's just going to transfer, help transfer the heat from the chips to that large metal shield. And that's what you want. Now, I also, uh, okay, a lot of people ask me, okay, well, should I replace the RF modulator? In general, the answer will be no. Okay, unless after you do a recap and you replace the voltage regulators with brand new ones, you do a recap, okay, and you put your RF shielding back on, if after you do all that, if you're getting fuzzy lines or wavy lines on your monitor, or it's, the text is not really clear, I mean, it's not sharp, okay? That means that the capacitors, I think there's three of them in here in the RF modulator, those should be replaced. Um, but that's the only time I recommend replacing this RF modulator. After you do a complete recap and you refurbish your computer, if you're seeing fuzzy lines on your computer, or the text is not sharp and clear, that means that the capacitors in this RF modulator um, needs to be changed out, needs to be replaced. But that's the only time I would recommend doing that. Otherwise, if the screen looks clear, it looks good, don't mess with this RF modulator because it is a pain in the butt to, to remove this and change out those caps. I will be the first one to admit that. Okay? Anyway, that's it for the first part of this uh, series. Um, stay tuned for part two where I actually recap the motherboard and I replace these voltage regulators with brand new ones. I mean these are cheap. I pick them up like 50 of them at a time. I buy them bulk rate and you can I think they cost me like I don't know about 20 cents a piece, 22 cents a piece, something like that you know. Um, just, it just depends how many you buy. Um, yeah. But anyway, that's it for this first part. Um, my name is Hans George Campbell. Stay tuned for part two.